Good morning, good evening, good night, y'all. This is your Football Scout 365 host and analyst, Woody Massey. I'm here with Coach Brandon Lumberg, fresh off a defensive tie battle last night. Uh, not under, but under the lights. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, under the moonlight almost is, is where it almost went. But yeah, crazy game. We talked about it before the show, but back and forth uh, was a little it's defensive. Like Stars were warriors, though. They, they, they yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some had some on field things, some injuries happen on the field that, uh, you know, might have required an ambulance to show up. And, and uh, we had to wait some things out. We ended up not even playing the fourth quarter. We had to turn the third quarter into the fourth quarter because we didn't have lights. So long story short, game ended in a 16 to 16 tie before it was all said and done. But pretty inspiring game, uh, to say the least. But fun time, fun time for sure. Then we have Nate Nasty Parker. How you doing, man? Doing all right. How about you guys? I'm doing all right. Me and Nate just got into a long-spirited debate that delayed the recording of this for 20 minutes about whether the Eagles are a good football team. And uh, he thinks that the Bucks will beat them on Monday night. So there's a there's a gentleman's agreement. <laughs> nice. Yeah. We'll yeah. see. So tune back in for next week for someone to rub the other one's face in. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, All right, guys, was, let's I talk was, about to oh, no, your guys' face into the uh, Vikings beating the Eagles last week. You and were. They, the you Vikings, were, bro. I was were, I was so – I'm still salty about that. I, yeah. I was right. I was I right. Be. I should have been right. Should've but been. you were wrong. Yeah. yeah. Horseshoes and hand, hand grenades, buddy. That's <laughs> what the NFL does to people, man. It makes, them, it makes them wrong a lot more often than not. A lot more often than that. Well, guys, let's put it, let's put our money where our mouth is. Let's talk about our top five NFL teams. So this is an official through two weeks top five power rankings. These are the people. They don't necessarily have to have the best records. These are the two teams that we think are the five best in the NFL right now and potential to win a Super Bowl. Brandon, kick us off with your top five. Yeah, quick rundown. San Francisco 49ers to start things off. Obviously, Kyle Shanahan's offense and, and the way it executes with Christian McCaffrey, uh, Debo Samuel, the emergence of Brandon Ayuk out there, uh, Brock Purdy really stepping up and, and being, you know, that dude out there on the field uh, that a lot of people pretty much didn't expect him to be even to this point. And he's proving that last year wasn't a fluke. Uh, the defensive side of the football, uh, it's pretty solid. Not as solid as my number two team, which is the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, their defense completely lights out, by the way. Uh, two New York teams in a row. Uh, they face Daniel Jones, then they face Zach Wilson. Uh, so uh, there's a little bit of a question there as to strength of schedule, uh, in my opinion, for Dallas. But they're right there with San Francisco. Uh, Dak Prescott really bridges any of those gaps, I believe, uh, in the matchup between San Francisco and Dallas. So I, I see them as very equal. But Micah Parsons, I feel like Micah Parsons could be the NFL MVP. There's a lot of speculation out there and people have been talking about it. He wants that. Uh, he believes that in himself. Um, so offensively and defensively, my top two teams pretty even. Then I've got the Philadelphia Eagles. I got them sitting there at three. Um, yeah, I know. Right. Uh, Jalen hurts though. He's still doing, he's still playing pretty well. Uh, his, his, the game hasn't really elevated. There's some questions and I know Woody, you're a huge fan of, uh, Shane Steichen and, and, and what he was able to do a year ago. And now right. with the Colts and you've really, you know, you're talking about doing a, a full scale evaluation of this dude, which I'm totally oh, interested in helping you and, and figuring that out. If I have, if I can, maybe. Okay, there you go. So I'm excited for that. But the offense, you know, started to do a little bit of that Shane Steichen stuff again. It, it, it was showing up in, in the uh, second game here. So I like what Sirianni's doing with that, kind of reverting back to more of that than what we had seen maybe even in game one of the season for Philly. So their defense, obviously, we know the story, super deep, uh, talented. You know, they probably got two starting defenses, uh, you know, balled into one. So they're number three, Miami Dolphins. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm still the verdict is out on their defense, it, in my opinion. But the offense and and what Mike McDaniel's been able to do with Tua, 
um, his development, the whole Tyreek Hill situation in that first game that blew everybody's mind and and then them going on the road and against a division rival and and being able to pretty much control the whole game shut uh, and down the new England offense. Yeah. Yeah. Th- yeah. The defense was able to shut down the new England offense, but I was just more impressed with what Tua was able to do against that defense and, and really playing that umbrella, uh, you know, two high safeties. Sometimes it looked like they had three high safeties over the top, uh, strategically brilliant, keeping uh, Tyreek Hill under wraps, but they attacked him in the run game and they played methodical. The Patriots wanted them to move down the field and, and take their time. And, and Tua was able to do that. And most importantly, Tua is not getting hit. That offensive line is playing at a high level. Then I got the Baltimore Ravens at five. Uh, Lamar Jackson, we already know uh, what he's able to do and what he's done in the past. I feel like he's starting to emerge uh, as a guy who can stand in the pocket, which we've seen him do, he's actually got a pretty efficient QB rating in his career from just the pocket, uh, not necessarily being utilized as a runner, primarily more him just taking off when the opportunity presents him presents itself. The big thing with Baltimore is how healthy can they stay? Uh, I like their defense and what they do defensively. Um, I'm not completely sold on on their defense being elite but if it is then this is a, a surefire super bowl contender and that's why they're in my top five kansas city would be six they're right hey, there hey, knocking hey, on hey, the door hey, hey. save kansas city for someone who actually believes them as all right top hey five. i believe in them hey i believe in yeah, them. well you know it's not as much as me apparently they, so. next week they might be in the top five <laughs> they might get there all right nate give us your top five uh i have dallas one uh, i think they're the most complete team of football right now i hate saying that shout out cspn all good no, things no, towards your cowboys <laughs> um i can't believe i'm saying i honestly i can't believe i'm giving them their flowers but they look great uh i still don't really think dak has been tested a whole bunch um but we'll see we'll see you know uh san francisco very close to honestly it's more like 1a 1b but dallas has got to give the nod, nod to dallas um Miami is my third uh, simply because they it, they just smoke the Patriots at home. Like, I don't even know. I don't like like. Mike McDaniel ran the ball straight down Belichick's throat and Belichick just sat there and gagged. Yeah, um, it's either that or it's pick your poison with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, four, I have the Chiefs. Uh, I love the bounce back win. It might not have been pretty, but what they did to what I believe to be a top 10 team in football and the Jacksonville Jaguars solidified them to be in my top t- top five. I can't say no for wh- how 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 easily they handled uh, that receiver receiving core in Calvin mm. Ridley, Ridley and Trevor Lawrence and really shut down their ground game. Um it, really, it helps when Chris Jones comes back and he's able to yeah, come in there and no, just be I, an I, immediate factor. That, dude, that's incredible, right? Yeah. It's so dude, incredible. It's absurd. And then my my fifth is going to be on no one's list anywhere. It is the Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, I am a yeah, believer in that. I'm a believer in that team uh, offensively and defensively. What Baker has done in the pocket and what – Contrary to what everyone saw during the preseason, him airmailing his receivers, he seems to have great chemistry and rapport with both Evans and Godwin. Um, and they're playing winning football. Yeah. SpongeBob Mayfield, dude. Hey, SpongeBob Mayfield. All right. Because I said I said yesterday he's kind yeah, of boxy. That, yeah. <laughs> That's a great I know one. when you said that, I was like, SpongeBob, yeah. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> SpongeBob Mayfield. Put his head on. Hey, a that's SpongeBob. a bold take. Uh, all right, I'm going to give you guys mine as also. Uh, I have Dallas at number one, and here's my thought process with Dallas at number one that I'm going to add mm-hmm. that because you guys just touched so well on it. It's very short and sweet. Um, there are f- a few defenses in my here time on this blessed earth that I've seen. <laughs> I know. That when you watch them, you're like, this is special. Uh, the first one that I can remember as a kid. I looked at my dad when I was like nine or 10 and I said, I think the Baltimore Ravens are going to win the Super Bowl. But Trent Dilfer now is their quarterback because that defense was absolutely special. And they only they averaged under 10 points a game for a whole season. Still might be the greatest defense of all time. The second time in my life was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Simeon Rice, Aeneas Williams, Derek Brooks, John Lynch, Warren Sapp. They were absolutely 
unbelievable. One of the best defenses I've ever seen. Flash forward a few years later, the third defense that sticks out in my mind is I could not believe how fast and how dominant they were. It was the Chicago Bears with Rex. Rex, They didn't win the Super Bowl, but they went to the Super Bowl with Rex Grossman as their quarterback, with Lance Briggs and Brian Erlocker. They were just an absolutely beastly defense. This Dallas defense puts the same fear for the other team's quarterback when I'm watching and thinking that they might actually hurt someone. Micah Parsons is an absolute freak. The vet, the mix of veteran and youth throughout the roster is just absolutely perfectly balanced. You have the guys that are hungry, the guys that can maintain the explosive playmakers. Having a guy like Diggs can be absolutely polarizing sometimes just because he's a threat to take it to the house at any point in time. And he could also give up a long touchdown run. Pass. But they have the pieces. And I think this defense is special. I'm going to leave it at that. San Francisco, their defense, honestly, isn't too far behind. The secondary has got a little bit more questions for me, but that front seven is absolutely beastly. At number three, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. They definitely have some problems to work out, but it has to do with pedigree. And when you have the best offensive line in the league and you can run the ball 11 times in a row on a drive and score a touchdown at any point in time, do you impose your will on another team? That is a strong football team until further notice at number four i have the kansas city chiefs because they have patrick they are winning without patrick mahomes on all all cylinders right now literally we've seen this before so i i trust andy Reid and patrick mahomes to figure it out but the fact that this young defense has taken the next step and guys like uh, mcduffie and carloftis are stepping up and then we saw the effect chris jones had in one game back uh, this they are right, right back there like the fact that they're winning without the offense right now should scare everybody. They could easily be a number one next week oh, yeah. with a with a dominant performance. And uh, my number five team, this is going to surprise some people because I I've been a little harsh on them in the off season, and it's uh, you know. I, it was mostly over their win total because I thought their division was going to be very tough. But if the Buffalo Bills play efficiently like they did on Sunday and take what the defense gives them and has a grounded running game, the Buffalo Bills will easily be back in the playoffs as a contender, top five. If they keep that balanced attack with Cook and Damian Harris and Josh Allen takes what the defense gives them and plays efficiently, when Josh Allen plays efficiently, when an athletic freak plays efficiently and smartly, that's really hard to beat because he can beat you with the special talent in the special moments when he needs to, but he just has to learn when to dial it up. And now you guys can absolutely berate me for putting the bills back in the top five. No, I don't, I don't have an issue with the bills. I mean, I don't have any, I I just, I'm just surprised. I'm I'm not going to berate you, but I was like, I, like, I, I, I mean, the bills are in my top 10 again. They, Hey, week one happened. Bills were outside my top 10, hundred percent honest. They were not in my top 10. They're probably like 12, 13, but, uh, I, I'd watch two. them in Miami play right now. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a betting man. I would, I would go all over the Bills. Like it, like right now. I'm looking like Ooh. you showed me one week. It, it was like it was like the Bills for me are like seven, six, seven, maybe eight. They should the, the Jets. Because they should like, pay the Jets a bonus. It was the because it's like ball. because it's like show me more. It's like show me show me one more week of consistent, fundamental, solid football. And then, few things. and then, and then I'll, and then I'll jump back on. There's few things nice. that restore my faith in a football team than adjustments. Because oh, I mean, what I it. saw in New York is what I was feared about them. The hero ball, the bad choices, but to flip that back mm-hmm. against a defensive line, like the Raiders with Crosby and the young yeah. rookie at a Texas tech uh, Tyree, I, I, I just I feared that pass rush with what we saw happen with the Jets and the efficiency like for Josh Allen to be able to be like, hey, I'm going to gather myself. I was trying to do too much. Let the game come to me. Yeah, I, I just love seeing a player be able to make that adjustment in one game. That's I so mean, rare. It's that's just, what, it gives me a real football, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that's what, what was it? Two years ago, Mahomes did the same thing, making sure Kelsey was doubled and. Mahomes was trying to do too much. That's when he that's when he racked up all those picks and uh, was a week. Take what they give you. Peak week 11, 12. 
he started doing exactly that. Jarek McKinnon check downs, making sure just moving the chains. Like it was methodical. If you can play a slow game, the big that's that's what separates up. That's what separated Tom Brady for for a long time. That dude. Okay, cool. Take what you give me. What is the best own two team in the NFL right now? Ooh, the San Diego Chargers. Sorry, the Los Los Angeles Chargers. I, that'd be cool if they were back in San Diego. I think. Yeah, I not for so. Woody though. I, I, I say I think that would like, make the most sense. No, I, I I wish they were still back there. That's what I, I like say. Them. I say Los Angeles Chargers. <laughs> it, it's I mean it, it's like what I'm going to flip a coin between the the Bengals and the and the Chargers here, but I think oh, yeah. the Chargers have a more complete roster, and if I had to put. If you make me pick between Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, I'm going to flip a coin. doesn't really bother me having one guy over the other. Um, neither has a Super Bowl. One has been, but has not won. Um, I mean, I guess I guess the I'm only going to go with the, I, I like to pick, but I, I, I'd say it's the Bengals for that exact opposite just because the pedigree. They've been the like youth. in the big games two, two, two I, years in a row. I think they're really underestimating how much they miss Jesse Bates. I think that was the leader of their defense. Yeah, no, I, I Atlanta, look what he's done for Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta is now that a is competitive football team. That like, is, we, uh, we don't want to pay these guys because they're not at premium positions. But sometimes guys are just the heart and soul of a unit. I mean, like the you bring up Tonsi Gardner Johnson, they yeah, yeah. did for that Detroit <sighs> unit in the first I, couple. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. This is the worst. <laughs> like when I heard that news, I I think I like like you know that moment when you get bad news and like your hand just grips whatever it's holding. Well, I was holding my phone and I thought I was going to like break my phone. I was you like crunched it. <laughs> like I was wow. like it, it was it was it was like so heartbreaking. Uh, but as far as so here's 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 why honestly here's why I didn't pick the Bengals. Joe Burrow scares me this season. Like I, he started picking it up and started to look more in rhythm in in the last half of uh, week two. But then he also tweaked his calf again. Oh yeah. Can I ask, like, why is Joe Burrow massage gunning his own calf? Like, you got trainers. Like, get the professionals in there. Like, oh yeah, hundred percent. Like he's over there on the side. I'm like, dude, get, you sit down. You stop it. Let me. Like, I went to medical school. Like, that's crazy to me. That he's working on himself on the sidelines. I mean, the Bengals are notoriously one of the cheapest franchises in the yeah. NFL, so it doesn't it's completely surprise me. For him. Yeah, I mean, they're like, right? they just they just signed him to a yeah, mega star deal. They're like, you they're can massage to, your own calf, have, dude. All that money. Sign, bro. The be- like we paid Bengals, you like a doctor. Yeah, I hope the bank <laughs> is good like as thirty Sean. doctors. I hope he's been taking notes from like Lynch and L- John Lynch because he's about to run in some he's about to run in some cap issues in like a year. Is T Higgins the best wide receiver on the Bengals? No, what? No, no. Jamar Chase is the best receiver. And to I didn't give my point on the Bengals. Bengals would be my choice. You guys have made all the points that I would probably make Um, outside of if Burrow can't get healthy real quick among all the 0 two teams. If Burrow can't get healthy, I think that's going to really hinder them. Uh, I think it was Jamar Chase who told him not to come back too soon. If you guys remember correctly, Mm -hmm. you guys remember that? He was saying not to come back, not to rush it. And he rushed it. And now it's like, hey, dude, I told you type of thing. Should have probably waited a week or two longer to see if that thing could heal up a little bit more. But we'll see how it plays out. I do think the Bengals obvious best 0-2. Um, yeah, I want to say the Chargers name because I like that because I agree about the roster. But I am so far gone on Staley. And he needed to be fired a season and a half ago. I, I love uh, Brandon Staley. I don't. I like don't. Uh, don't get me wrong. I. I like he has given me every reason to critique and hate him. But something about Brandon Staley, it's like this X factor. And I think like we're gonna see it this this like the the rest of the season. His mm-hmm. he knows his back is up against the wall. He knows he's gonna have to like let loose. On the play, like he's gonna, like I am excited to watch the Chargers play football because that team um, is really effing good. Joey Bosa yeah. was in the backfield last week. All right, guys, let's uh, talk about the uh, the least smelly turd in the 
in, in the yard. The top five bottom teams. Who has the <laughs> no. brightest future? Uh, uh -oh. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to say it is the Carolina Panthers because, boy, let me tell you, uh, Bryce Young, that guy's a star. Uh, he like oh, I yeah. he's he looks like a little kid running around out there, literally like not like Kyler Murray where he's like a big, thick bit. Like he looks like a little kid, but he makes throws that I see superstar quarterbacks make. Like yeah. you just see it, you see the wheels turning. Once the game slows down a little bit for him, that guy's gonna be a top five NFL quarterback. Like it's he has superstar just written all over him. The throws. That he can make downfield without a number one. Like he makes, he's extending Adam Thielen's career. Adam Thielen looked cooked last year. And now he's yep. like putting up good, like Bryce Young. You hear, like, like it, he's the real deal. They smashed that. Number one overall pick, future yeah. Pro Bowler. They didn't future flinch. All pro teams. No. They didn't flinch, man. They, they could have went. <laughs> they could have went CJ Stroud. There were people pushing for that. Hey, the more, you know, NFL ready kind of passer coming in there with yep. the, with all the attributes you're looking for, the size and all that, but then the processing aspect of it. So again, you're, you hit the nail on the head. You're seeing him make great decisions. That's what he is. And that's how he operates. Uh, he protects himself. Well, when, when there is pressure, uh, I've seen him actually take kind of a hit and, and he's avoiding landing hard. So he's already kind of got that mechanism in his brain, <laughs> that training and that thought press process of, I know I'm not going to last long if I just take humongous hits, trying to make plays and things like that. So well, Brandon, they um, started teaching that the year after Tua left, uh, yeah, Alabama. I mean, listen, I, I, I really, I really do think that, you know, the comparisons that we made in the offseason, the whole Kyler Murray kind of thing and all that, I, I think that he does have the Joe Burrow thing to him a little bit uh, with the accuracy and kind of standing in the pocket and making throws like that. I think that he could be a dude like that for Carolina. They got to get him some weapons. They got rid of their best weapon uh, offensively. So now it's just kind of him trying to figure out or that offense just trying to figure itself out. So. I give it a year. I, I honestly do. I think if they make the right moves this off season and, and there's some opportunity in the off season, we'll look at that. Get a, get a, a true number one receiver for that guy. As a counter to the, the uh, Bryce young is the greatest thing since white on rice. Um, I do want to throw out Bryce young as the lowest ranked quarterback, lowest graded quarterback of all 33 starting quarterbacks including Aaron Rodgers. Uh, and in, that's according fine. To PFF. That's fine. And that's behind, based off behind, of behind. Yeah, no, no, I understand that. But behind Rit Kenny Pickett, Desmond Ritter, Zach Wilson, Dobbs, CJ Stroud. Yeah. Here's the uh, thing with my PFF grades. CJ Stroud went up a little the, bit. Yeah, he did. And, and the I thing don't with understand PFF why you got like. The I, I guess I guess I'm the king of waiting. Ohio State early. quarterbacks, bro. I've, Brian, I've I'm, I, 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 I take it back. I'm the king, <laughs> I'm the king. I'm the king of way too early hot takes. But yeah, no, I'm I'm like I'm like I don't know why we're just not giving this kid more time. And then I'm the guy that's like Trey Lance bust before he ever played it down in the NFL. Yeah, that's cool. Well, we Trey Lance Trey Lance was based off of experience level, you know, and not right really there. having the not really having the experience level coming out of school. I mean, you've got that CJ Stroud argument. come. Right. My argument That's, for CJ Stroud argument. is he's playing high level yeah. uh, competition. We've mm -hmm. seen what he can do. We've seen, you know, the processing issues in certain situations at the college level that, you know, at the NFL does not translate well unless you improve it. Yeah. So that's what he's got to fix. Uh, Bryce Young is the opposite of that quick process, quick process, getting through his reads. He knows where he's going with the football decisive and he's matched up with, you know, Frank Reich. And, and that's a perfect uh, marriage so far. So good. Now, in, in terms of PFF grades, I wanted to throw out there, you know, the way that they grade, it, it doesn't really measure the talent level yeah. around a guy and all those Correct. other factors that go into it. So it even PFF admits it. The uh, one one more thing. We'll talk about the rest of the bottom teams next episode after week three. Uh, are we worried about Justin Fields? No. I yes. I am worried about Justin Fields. I am too. In a Bears uniform. Processing. I'm worried about him in a Bears uniform. Yes, he's Have not you seen processing. The clip, 
Where I've seen he, the a guy ton wide of stuff. open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, it's, yes. It's there's a confident. There's serious confidence issues, and uh, Dan Orlovsky brought it up, and it it really resonated with me when I thought about it. There's one of two things going on here. Either he's literally just missing it because he's not processing well, or he's missing these things because he doesn't trust what he's seeing. And in this game. In in just this last game, or at least over the last two weeks, but in this last game, there's there's receivers running in the same area, same route, uh, doing a curl route in the same spot. I mean, that's a coaching problem. Uh, running the same play simultaneously, where the defense in the NFL is obviously going to recognize that when you're playing the Buccaneers, you've got elite linebackers who are going to see yeah. that stuff in corners. So, <clears throat> nevertheless. I think it's it's one of two things with Justin Fields. We still have time to kind of dissect it, but they got to let him play his game. They're not letting him do his thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's not. They're trying to put him back in the pocket like they did early last year, and then they found out quick that's not who he's going to be. And that's the bottom line. I, I mean, the biggest thing is, and I'll just we'll, we'll end it on this: the Bears' quarterback coach is is probably the guy the driving a lot of this like stay in the pocket kind of stuff because he's yeah. coming off. He's coming off co coaching and in helping Kirk cousins improve a great deal, but they're completely, they're two completely different, two different worlds, yep. two different worlds, two different worlds it's of athleticism uh, and type of play. Let, let him be free, man. He's not going to fields might not be a super bowl winning quarterback, but he can win you some games and, and be an athlete. He can bridge the gap. If you're looking for a QB down the road, he might be on a, in another uniform next year, which could be tremendously beneficial for him. Could be. So, yeah, they may they might have missed the bus trading him this year. I, yeah. I know CJ got eaten alive, and there's an, uh, talk about another day. But, the Bears uh, were the Bears were a terrible situation. They were. Uh, they were. That's the Texans. The Texans really f them by by winning that last game. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's uh, going to wrap it up for our week two roundup and recap uh, for Brandon, Nate, CJ, myself. We are Football Scale 365. Oh yeah. Where's my coffee at? I'm still waiting on it. <laughs>